friends, I'm Ms. Dwyer, and I'm an elementary school science coordinator. If you've never met me before, you know that my favorite place to learn is outside. And today, we're going to learn a little bit about where monarch caterpillars and monarch butterflies live. So I'm in my favorite field here in the town that I live in. And if you look behind me, you might see little green things sticking up in this field above the grasses and other species that grow here. Those are milkweed, and that's the best way to start looking for monarch caterpillars. So, you may not be able to see the milkweed behind me, so let's take a closer look. Right near where I'm standing are some good examples of milkweed, and it actually one of those milkweed plants has a monarch caterpillar right on it right now. Now milkweed grows in fields. Sometimes it grows at the edges of fields, like playing fields in your town, or even around the edges of schools. Most of our schools in Winchester have milkweed. Milkweed has big, oval, green leaves. They go around a green stalk. And one way we can always tell that we're looking at milkweed is if you break off a little piece of it, it lets out a milky white sap, just like that. Another great place to look for milkweed and monarchs is at the edges of playing fields. I'm here at the edge of a soccer field in my town. All towns and big cities have playing fields. And a lot of times they have open edges on them. That's the type of habitat that milkweed grows in. It likes a lot of sun and it likes an open space. So right here next to me are some older stalks of milkweed and here behind me. And I wanna show you a couple more features just to help you identify what milkweed looks like. Here's some good examples of slightly older milkweed. As you can see, it's still got those oval shaped green leaves. In this one, the stem is turning a little bit reddish brown, but at this time of year, it's also got these really interesting structures on it here. They're spiky, sort of cone shaped. These are also interesting things to investigate. You know it's a monarch if you find a caterpillar that's on milkweed and has three different colored stripes black, white, and yellow. It also has antenna-like structures at both ends. This one's on top, but usually you have to look underneath the leaves. Here's another little tip. If you look at this small, young milkweed plant, you can see there's one leaf that's sort of bent backwards towards me. Um, and if you look closely underneath that leaf, you might see something working on it. This is another good uh, hint for you because oftentimes a monarch caterpillar will break the stem of the leaf and then eat it. So look for leaves that are a little bit folded back that and then look underneath them. That can be a good way to find a monarch caterpillar. So what I have here is one of my favorite types of monarch caterpillars to find. If you look right in the center, you can find a very young caterpillar. Now it is a windy day, so it's a little hard to see. But just so you can get a sense of how big that caterpillar is, let me put my fingers right next to it. So it's now climbing down the stem between my fingers up, oh, and it just disappeared. So I pulled it up so you can see it a little bit better because this is the second one that I'll be collecting today. I've got my finger right next to it to help you locate it and also to help you see the size. Now if you look super closely, you can see those stripes. It's got those yellow, black, and white stripes on it. It looks exactly the same, just a miniature version. Now let's see. There, that's a good look. He's a really cute little guy. So this is, as I said, I've seen a lot of monarchs here. So this is the second one 
that I'm going to bring home with me because it's a, it's much younger and I'm very curious to see what happens as it grows and develops. So I've spent quite a bit of time in this field today. Enough time so that I know that there this isn't the only monarch caterpillar. In fact, there are lots of them here. So I've decided today that I'm going to collect this one because I'd like to see if I can get it to go through its whole life from being a teenager caterpillar as it is today to being an adult monarch. So I have a few special collection tools with me. Um, I have a scissor that I always carry with me in my science pack and I have a paper bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to not just take the caterpillar, but I'm going to take the whole plant that it's growing on and bring it home with me today. So let me show you how to do that. I also brought with me a plastic lunch baggie with a paper towel that I already um, wet, made wet under my faucet at home. Um, so this is what I'm going to wrap around my milkweed stem in order to make sure that it stays alive. Milkweed is the only food that monarchs eat. So if we keep the milkweed that the caterpillar is already eating, then we know it's got a food, safe food source, at least for today. So I'm just going to take my scissors and go all the way to the base of my milkweed plant as far as I can and cut the branch off just like that. Now you'll see right away there's going to be that milky, what we call latex, that comes out of the bottom of the stem. So my caterpillar is still safely on top. I'm not actually touching um, the caterpillar. We don't really want to handle wildlife if we can help it, just to make sure that it stays safe. So I'm going to, it's got a few weeds on it. I'm just going to wrap my wet paper towel around the base of the stem because plants need water to stay alive. And then I'm going to put the whole thing the base into my plastic bag. Now, sometimes I bring a little elastic to wrap around just to make sure the whole thing stays safe. If you can see, the monarch caterpillar is still happily chewing away right on top. And I'm gonna take this whole thing and just put it in my paper bag to make sure that the caterpillar still has lots of food to eat and lots of air to breathe. You probably noticed it's not a fast moving creature. So it will quite happily just sit in my paper bag if I leave it open, chewing on milkweed, at least for a little while. And so here we go. It's just a, a bag that I brought from the grocery. I'm just gonna put my friend right inside there gently, as gently as I can, make sure it's safe. And I'm not gonna seal the bag. I'm just gonna leave it open and carry it by its handles. I'm also gonna go home pretty quickly so that I can make sure that this caterpillar doesn't get too warm, that it doesn't get exposed to too many things, that the milkweed doesn't dry out. Monarch butterflies are incredibly interesting. They're also really important to the ecosystems in which they live, including this one. So I want to be a good citizen and make sure that if I'm going to collect a monarch to observe, that I'm collecting it, first of all, from a place that I have permission, either my own yard, a neighbor's yard that I've asked permission, or a farmer's field like this, where it's okay for me to take just one monarch. The other thing is, I only wanna take a small amount, because if I took all of them home, they would be leaving their natural habitat, and that would be bad for everything around them. So it's really important if you want to try this, and I encourage you to try it, only bring home maybe one or two caterpillars and only bring them home from an area that has lots of them to ensure that you're not taking the only ones. The last thing I want to mention is that if you're going to try this at home, and I encourage you to try it, you make sure that you never bring home anything that's a living thing unless you know you can care for it. Now to care for a monarch butterfly is pretty simple, but it's really important. You need to have a space for the monarch to grow up. And that means a nice 
container that has lots of air in it. I'll show you a good example. You also need to make sure that you have a source of food for the entire life cycle of this animal. Now this is where it's pretty easy, but you have to make sure that you can get access to fresh milkweed. Most of these caterpillars will need one stalk of fresh milkweed every day, or at least every other day. That's their only food and water. So if you can't get fresh milkweed where you live, fresh milkweed means milkweed that has not been sprayed by any kind of insecticide or pesticide. Please don't bring home a monarch unless you can provide it with that milkweed. All right, so I've brought my monarch home and now I wanna make sure that the monarch has a safe and healthy home to grow up in. So let me just show you what I've done. This one's not too camera shy, which is nice. So um, I took it out of the plastic bag that I had originally put the milkweed stock in to keep it moist with a paper towel. And I just found a jar in my kitchen. I found an old honey jar and I filled it, um, you know, about halfway, maybe third of the way with water. Well, the other thing I have to make sure, and if you can see the monarch is, uh, still pretty happy right here, not, not moved around too much, but on the leaf. I wanna make sure that the monarch doesn't fall into the water because monarchs can't swim. So the caterpillar will drown if it, for some reason, crawls down underneath the bottom of one of these leaves and ends up in the jar of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some um, plastic wrap from my kitchen. You could also use fabric if you have that, um, anything really that's gonna stay in place. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the bottom of both my jar and the milkweed. And I'm being gentle, and as you can see, uh, this really doesn't bother the caterpillar very much. So I'm just wrapping it up so that there's no spaces in there for uh, the caterpillar to fall into the water. And like I said, you could use fabric, um, you could even use wax paper, anything that will just stay and cover up that opening. Now, if you wanna keep it nice and secure, you could tie a piece of string or put a rubber band around the edge here. Now this milkweed, this one stalk will last a day um, since I just collected it, and maybe two, but probably only one day. So I'm going to make sure that I can get fresh milkweed every day. The safest place to find it is the place that you found the caterpillar, because if the caterpillar's healthy, then it's probably got a healthy food source. So I try to collect mine from very close to my home so that I know every day, either on my morning, on the way into work, or in the evening when I get home, I can just cut one stalk of milkweed and do the same thing, put it in a jar, um, like this and put it in the enclosure that I've made for the caterpillar. Now, I, I won't uh, move the caterpillar. I don't actually touch it. I just put the fresh milkweed in along with this one. So if you've ever raised monarch caterpillars um, at home or in the classroom before or painted lady or anything like that, you've probably seen those butterfly nets that you can purchase. Um, and those work great and they're easy to see through. But you don't actually have to purchase anything in order to raise monarchs at home. You can actually use things that you already have. As long as you have fresh milkweed and something for that caterpillar to crawl on, whether it's the milkweed stalk or sometimes I put in a stick as well, um, all you really need to make sure is that the caterpillar has enough space and enough air. So I'm going to show you a couple of simple solutions. One thing that you can do is you can just take a cardboard box, really any clean cardboard box. I usually put um, some newspaper right there in the bottom and then you want to make sure that you cover the box with something that uh, the insect can breathe through. So I'll show you a couple of ideas for that. Um, it depends on what you have around the house. I happen to have some um, mosquito netting that you can see right through that shows that it's letting lots of air through. So I could just cover my box with a piece of my mosquito netting, just like that. Now I'd wanna secure it 
So I'd want to either tape it down or just um, wrap a string and tie it tight around the whole thing. Um, something that I can undo so I can get in there to give fresh milkweed to the caterpillar. Um, but something like this works great for raising a monarch. And actually you can see really well in there. So I'm going to try this. If you don't have um, a piece of fabric like this, excuse me, I'm trying to untangle it from my box. If you don't have something like this at home, um, you could ask your family, your parents, if they have an extra screen. So this is just a window screen. It's getting chilly outside, so we're starting to take our screens out. You could just put a screen like that right on top of your box and there you go. You have a great caterpillar enclosure right there. I might want to weight this down a little bit around the sides. Maybe put something just to like a book or something on each of the four sides just to hold it on there so that the caterpillar doesn't crawl, try to crawl out. But again, it's got nice plenty of space and lots of air and that's really all the caterpillar needs. I hope you've had fun today, friends. And I want to make sure that you don't get discouraged if you don't find a monarch butterfly. The truth is, they can be pretty hard to find. In fact, some days I go out and I look all afternoon, even some years I go out and I look for the whole season and I can't find any monarch butterflies. But that's okay, because where they like to live, there's lots and lots of interesting things to look at. I have found some of my best discovery not finding monarch butterflies. So I hope that you get out and explore, do so safely, Make sure you always have your mask ready to go and I'll see you soon.